just, I believe, finished leveling. Overview is I had this um, here, this concrete pad that's been there for, I think, decades. Not very thick, it's only a couple inches thick, but it looks like it's weathered pretty well, so I wanted to leave that in. But it was only about 10 by 10, so I need to, well, a little nine by eight, actually. I need to extend it another three feet to get the 12 feet in this dimension. I extended it with these pavers, uh, paper base, sand, and then pavers on top. I think they, I tamped them down, but I think they may sink a little deeper over time. So I leveled this side a little higher than the other side so that, to deal with the future sinking. Then you got these three or four rather, uh, four by four skids. There's treated lumber. Um, and those need to be perpendicular to the joists here for the floor. And then I took the level, which you can see out here. And uh, basically what I needed to do was this one was pretty much level on its own. Uh, this one needed to be leveled and I needed to put some leveling material underneath it on that end. This needed to be raised the whole board because you can see this concrete underpinning here is not um, level at all. And then as you can see, this one is, it, this last one is raised the whole way. What I did for leveling was I cut these pieces uh, off the treated lumber. Here's an example here. And I just made sure I, I treated the other side, the cut side, uh, with some waterproofing stain, because those are incompressible. And actually what I did before is I took these shingles, pieces of shingles here, and I stacked them up. So instead of those wood pylons here, I had sh uh, stacks of shingles. And I did that to get it level first. And that told me how thick I would need to cut my wood pillars. And the reason I didn't want to leave the shingles there on the bottom is because I've read that you're not supposed to have shingles touching the ground because the moisture and water will degrade them faster than the degrade treated lumber. So uh, use the shingles to level it, then got, cut all my pieces that I knew I would need of different sizes. The biggest pieces are here on the back here. This one's about one and, one and three quarter inch here. And so I swapped out my piles of uh, shingles with these pieces of wood. And then if I needed any more leveling, I did shingles in between them so that their shingles aren't touching the ground. No, I'm just doing the video. So now I've got it level, and I think now ready to start putting the floorboards on. I am a little worried about critters and stuff getting underneath the floor. So I've got some mesh I'm gonna put around. thing about leveling I wanted to show you um, there's some places where the joists there's a little gap between where the joist is and the skid so in those places you can put a little uh, shingle so that the weight will go straight to that instead of bending the joist and another thing is we're here in Southern California we're about earthquakes shifting things side to side uh, so what I did was I got these brackets um, and these concrete um, anchors. It, again, this concrete pad is only maybe two inches thick or so, but I figure if I anchor to that, then you know, an earthquake would have to move the whole pad. Uh, and this way I'll keep the shed anchored to the pad. So that's why I have these, and then I have some wood screws that are exterior gray uh, to go into the skids. Cheap labor. You're getting pretty good at it. You're doing good, Luke. Come on, Penny, don't play with the plants. Hammer. Whack it in, Luke. Whack it. Whack it. There you go. Keep 